Few films have had as much cultural impact, and few films have done so well at capturing the passion and spirit of rock and roll. Here's everything you need to know about School of Rock. Screenwriter Mike White became inspired by the Langley School's Music Project, a series of recordings of children choruses singing Beach Boys and David Bowie songs recorded in the 1970s. Those recordings ended up becoming a cult classic. White was also waiting to write a film for his friend, Jack Black. Sure, he had already written a film that starred Black called Orange County, but White later revealed that the part really didn't fit him that well. So based on both the Langley School's music project and Jack Black, White wrote a screenplay about a substitute teacher who secretly starts a band with his students. Producer Scott Rudin and director Richard Linklater decided to take the film on. Linklater originally turned it down, but changed his mind. Rudin and Linklater wanted the film to be as authentic as possible, and they spent a considerable amount of time casting. Jack Black was obviously playing the lead role, since White wrote the script literally for him. You write something for a specific actor, you, you know, you're really pulling your hair out going, if, if he doesn't like it, then I've wasted the last six months of my life. But it was a challenge finding a cast of mostly kids. Oh, and kids who could actually play instruments. Ultimately, finding kids who could play instruments and sing proved to be more important. White even ended up getting a role as the Jack Black character's roommate. According to multiple accounts, Jack Black ended up becoming a MVP on set. His charisma and energy were contagious, and he helped the young actors, several acting for the first time in their lives, feel comfortable on set, even playing games with them between scenes. That said, some of their parents were a bit nervous that Black might be a negative influence on their children. Children. Many of the songs you hear in the film that Black and the kids came up with, yeah, they came up with them on set. Filming took place in late 2002 in various locations throughout the New York City metropolitan area. The school itself was filmed at both Wagner College and the Buckley Country Day School. The film got a PG-13 rating due to literally one reference to drugs. Paramount made what would become known as School of Rock for less than $35 million, opening on October October 3rd, 2003, the film went on to make over $131 million at the box office. It was one of the most critically acclaimed films of 2003, which is pretty impressive for a comedy. Most comedies don't get critic love. It currently is certified 91% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and was notably nominated for a Golden Globe. I'd call that a success. Here is the basic storyline without any spoilers. The film begins with the main character, Dewey Finn, played by the aforementioned Jack Black, rocking out a bit too much with his band, No Vacancy. The crowd is kind of meh, as demonstrated by this epically failed stage dive by Finn. The next morning, Dewey's roommate, Ned Schneebly, and Schneebly's girlfriend, Patty, wake him up to ask him for his half of the month's rent. Mike White, the mentioned screenwriter of the film played the role of Schneebly. What a great name choice that was, by the way. And Sarah Silverman played the role of his controlling girlfriend. How controlling? She was the reason why Schneebly asked for the rent to begin with. Anyway, Finn doesn't have the money, but promises to get it soon. The band is about to hit it big time. We're going to win Battle of the Bands, and when I'm rolling in the Benjamins, I will throw you and your dog a bone. Good night. However, Finn would not be getting that money because he soon finds out he is kicked out of his own band. Later, back at the apartment, he answers the phone and speaks to Roz Mullins, the principal of Horace Green Prep School. She is looking for a substitute teacher and is calling to see if Ned Schneebly can substitute. Realizing this could be an opportunity to get rent money, Finn lies and says he he is Schneebly and will be there soon to start working. Finn shows up impersonating his roommate, though he really struggles, as demonstrated by him not even being able to spell his last name. You know what? Why don't you all just call me Mr. S? Mr. S has never taught here at Horace Green, so I want you all to be on your best behavior. 
After a rough first day, where he rushes out the door ahead of his students, he returns the next day to students who are confused and even angry as to why he is not teaching them anything. Later in the day, Finn overhears his students in music class playing really well. He immediately goes back to the classroom to begin plans to turn his class into a rock band that will be auditioning for the Battle of the Bands contest he wanted to enter with his old band. When the students return from music class, he tells them they will be working on a, quote, secret project for the next few weeks. They can't tell anyone, especially their parents and other teachers. He haphazardly casts students for instruments and of course makes sure he has the role as lead vocalist and lead guitarist. For the other students, he finds various other roles, including a, quote, security staff to make sure no one finds out about what they are up to in the classroom. For the rest of the film, the class turns into a real rock band as Finn guides them while simultaneously struggling to not get caught for fraud. The whole thing does turn into a meaningful, transformative experience for both the students and Finn. School of Rock is first and foremost a comedy, but it does have its tender moments. It is totally driven by its star, Jack Black. Rarely is a role so perfect for an actor. Mike White later said if Black would have turned down the role, he would have thrown the script away. And while Black shines in every scene of this film, his chemistry with his students comes across as incredibly authentic. The film does follow a familiar formula of the selfish protagonist slowly gaining empathy and more self-understanding by the end. But I have been touched by your kids. And I'm pretty sure I've touched them. However, the lighthearted style and genuine chemistry of the characters is refreshing. At the beginning of the film, one might assume that the lives of the students might be ruined once Dewey Finn enters that classroom. By the end of the film, that same person is certain that him entering the classroom was what was best for these kids. Two themes come up in School of Rock, and both are cliche, leadership and teamwork. Yep, those two boring themes, which are actually values your teachers and coaches and parents tried to instill in you growing up, but we have very different characters with diverse roles all coming together for a common purpose and ending up better off in the end because of it. You'd think it was a sports film, but nope. It kind of proves you don't need sports to teach teamwork. And it's one of the few films out there that's not a musical, but celebrates music. If you're not a fan of rock and roll before watching, there's a good chance you will be after. The film reminds us that rock and roll was supposed to be rebellious. Pretty, where are your sleeves? And what have you done to your hair? It's called punk. Well, it's not school uniform. Miss Mullins, you're the man. Thank you, Frankie. And that nonconformity was in fact a virtue necessary for society to progress. School of Rock went on to become a TV show on Nickelodeon and a Broadway musical created by THE Andrew Lloyd Webber. Perhaps more importantly, it helped fuel the growth of Paul Green's School of Rock program, a school designed to get kids playing rock music together with the goal of playing before a paying live audience. The program skyrocketed in popularity after the film's release, and now franchises all around the world serving more than 17,000 students. Most of the child actors in the film went back into obscurity after their brief stardom, although Miranda Cosgrove went on to have a long career and is still acting. Rumors of a sequel have been around for almost as long as the film has been out, but it doesn't appear that will be happening anytime soon. In 2013, the cast reunited to play a concert as sort of a 10-year reunion. That's right, they were all still active musicians. Pretty cool stuff. 15 years later, the film continues to inspire any kid, no matter where that kid comes from, to pick up an instrument and start a band. And it's not just the kids who can someday become rock stars, it's also the teachers. Thank you.
It's a rock song. October 3rd is the 15th anniversary of School of Rock. I remember seeing this one on opening night while I was in college. So what did you think about this film? Also, what other film would you like to see explained in a similar fashion? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody.